Entire swaths of the American Midwest are obliterated. Washington, D.C., London, and Berlin are decimated in fiery explosions. A quiet rural town in upstate Maine is annihilated. In a matter of minutes, 50 million people will die. If Russia ever launched any nukes, many of its targets would be within the 3.797 million square miles or 9.834 million square kilometers that make up the United States. This is because the U.S. has the most powerful military in the world and is the only country with a nuclear arsenal that rivals Russia's own. Therefore, as we examine key locations Russia would target, we'll start in the United States and then zoom out to the world as a whole. There are very few parts of the U.S. that would be safe from destruction if Russia launched a nuclear strike. There would also be very little the U.S. could do to stop the missiles from striking their targets as they would descend in overwhelming numbers. New intel identifies some of the first areas that will be targeted by Russian nukes, and they are not where you might expect. The question is, will you be safe? We're going to dive right into the key targets that Russia will strike, but before we do so, let's look at how we know who will be in danger. This year, Putin announced that he'll suspend Russia's participation in the New START nuclear weapons treaty. The treaty was agreed upon in 2011 in hopes of reducing the number of nuclear weapons around the world. However, now that Putin's declared this country will no longer abide by the START treaty, he can increase the stockpile of 5,889 nukes Russia already has. Only 1,588 of these nuclear weapons are currently deployed. But if Putin's preparing for nuclear war, this could quickly change. Regardless, having over 1,500 active nuclear warheads is more than enough to decimate every U.S. and NATO target on the globe. This is why when Putin said, to defend Russia and our people, we doubtlessly will use all weapons resources at our disposal, this is not a bluff, it was a serious cause for concern for the West. Currently, Russia has the most nuclear weapons out of any other country, with the United States following closely behind with around 5,244 nukes. Although it should be noted that the U.S. is still trying to decommission and lower the number of nuclear warheads it has, while many nuclear countries are increasing their stockpiles, just like Russia. Some of the locations that will be targeted are easier to predict than others, but if we listen to what Putin has said in the past, he has blatantly stated where the nukes will be aimed. While talking to the Russian people on national television, Putin discussed a new hypersonic missile that could travel five times faster than the speed of sound at 3,836 miles per hour, or 6,173 kilometers per hour. He claimed this missile could be fitted with a nuclear warhead. The weapon likely doesn't exist in any type of working fashion, but in the announcement, Putin proclaimed it would be used to strike the Pentagon, Camp David, Jim Creek Naval Radio Station, Fort Ritchie, and McClellan Air Force Base. These are all military targets, which makes sense if Russia were to launch nukes. Let's start by looking at what other military targets Russia will go after if war breaks out before getting into the major cities, towns, and other locations that a Russian nuclear attack could target. Like the US, Russia has nuclear warheads that vary in yield. We'll analyze the destructive power of the RT-2PM Topol with a yield of 800 kilotons, one of Russia's most common nukes in its arsenal. Later on, we'll examine what would happen if Russia used some of its highest yield nukes and the massive amount of death and destruction it would cause. Let's start with the Pentagon. As we know, this will be one of the main targets for Russia. The Pentagon is the headquarters for the Department of Defense in the U.S. By destroying it, Russia would deal a significant blow to the U.S.'s military command structure. This would not fully cripple the U.S. military, but it would cause a disruption in the leadership of the country. The other problem with Russia hitting the Pentagon with a nuke is that it would destroy much of Washington, D.C., the capital of the nation. There are around 713,000 people living in D.C., with more than 6,385,000 living in the greater D.C. area. That means if a nuke goes off over the Pentagon, it will kill around 420,000 people in the initial blast. Estimates put the number of total injured close to 861,500. The fireball caused by the nuclear explosion would vaporize the Pentagon and anything within a half-mile radius. The blast damage would extend four miles out from the epicenter, which would mean most of Washington's legislative buildings and monuments would be destroyed or severely damaged. When looking at the images of the nuclear explosions that we provide in this video, keep in mind that the innermost circle closest to the epicenter is the area that will be consumed in the fireball, so anything inside this circle will be effectively vaporized. The bluish ring second from the epicenter signifies the area where the shock wave and air blast from the explosion will cause serious damage that could destroy buildings and cause flying debris, causing more death and injuries. The third yellowish colored ring signifies the area where the radiation would be so intense it could cause third degree burns. This is also true of all the areas before it and would also result in harmful mutations to people's DNA, which could lead to cancer. 
The last ring signifies the light blast damage that could also still lead to fatalities. Anyone in any of these circles that survived the initial blast would get a large dose of radiation and would likely die soon after. The White House is about 2.17 miles from the Pentagon, so if the president was there, he would be at risk of being killed by the high-intensity shockwave. Although Russia would likely launch a nuke dedicated to hitting the White House, so the point would be moot. As a result of the nuke hitting the Pentagon, thousands of government officials and their workers would be killed. The government would go into crisis mode, and almost all power would be immediately given to the president. If the president were killed in the blast, the next person in the line of succession would become the commander-in-chief which in order would be the Vice President, Speaker of the House, President Pro Tempore of the Senate, Secretary of State, Secretary of Treasury, Secretary of Defense, and so on, until someone who was still alive could take over. Other than taking out the US Capitol, Russia would also need to destroy as many nuclear missile silos as possible in order to have any hope of surviving a retaliatory nuclear strike by the US. This tactic would not be 100% effective, as the United States has too many nukes of their own, a number of early warning systems, and nuclear missiles aboard submarines in unknown locations around the world. However, at the very least, Russia would need to take out as many US nuclear missile silos as possible in the first round of attacks. This means some pretty remote parts of the US would be targeted. If Russia was hoping to survive the next few hours, it would need to target all of the United States Minuteman III ICBM bases. The first one we'll look at is Malmstrom Air Force Base in the middle of Montana. Malmstrom has around 3,400 military personnel and about a thousand civilians working on base. However, it's its 150 Minutemen 3 nuclear missiles that Russia would be aiming for. Putin would likely order several nukes to be launched at any high priority targets, but just one would be devastating. Everyone on the base would be killed in the initial blast, along with 15,000 people in the nearby towns of Black Eagle and Great Falls. The number of injured would be around twice as many. The population in the region isn't very dense, so the casualties wouldn't be nearly as high as a major city, but that isn't the objective of hitting Malmstrom Air Force Base. Russia would be only trying to cripple the military installation's ability to launch its Minuteman missiles back at their homeland. Unfortunately, upon detonation, the water flowing through the Missouri River near the blast site would immediately evaporate. The water further upstream would continue to flow and eventually pass through the irradiated landscape around Malmstrom. This water would then carry radioactive particles downstream and eventually into the Mississippi River. For weeks and even months, the contaminated water would not be safe to drink. Wildlife will die from radiation poisoning even if they're hundreds of miles away from the blast site. However, Malmstrom isn't the only military target on the list. A second key military base that Russia would target is Minot Air Force Base in North Dakota. This installation also contains approximately 150 Minuteman missile silos. Minot itself doesn't have as many staff as Malmstrom, with only 3,200 military personnel and 420 civilian employees. However, the town of Minot itself is more populated than the area around Malmstrom. This means the number of casualties will be higher when the nuke detonates. The number of immediate casualties will be 23,300, with another 20,000 people suffering injuries from the air blast of the explosion. This entire region of the country is sparsely populated, so the fallout won't contaminate as many people as other regions. But again, the goal for these nukes is to render the US ICBMs in the area inoperable. The final military base that would be a must-strike location for Russia would be F.E. Warren Air Force Base in Wyoming. However, the Minuteman silos under its control are actually spread between Wyoming, Colorado, and Nebraska. This base also oversees around 150 missiles, with 3,360 military members and 964 civilians working at the location. Like with the other ICBM missile silos, more than one Russian nuke would be dedicated to the area. But even just one would cause around 26,600 deaths and 36,380 casualties. The town of Cheyenne would be decimated, and anyone there at the time of detonation would likely receive a lethal dose of radiation. Russia would also launch nukes at the US command and control targets across the country. Some of these locations are more well known than others. In fact, you might be living near one and not even know it. The one obvious target would be North American Aerospace Defense Command, or NORAD, at Peterson Air Force Base. Unfortunately, this is just outside of Colorado Springs, a heavily populated area in the state. This means that when the nuke strikes the Air Force Base, it'll also decimate much of Colorado Springs. NORAD is a combined organization that includes the United States and Canadian employees who oversee aerospace warning, air sovereignty and protection for Canada, the continental US, and Alaska. 
Peterson Air Force Base and the surrounding area employs or is home to a large number of military service members and civilians who work at the base. In fact, there are over 8,750 active duty members, 1,325 reservists, 10,200 family members of the military, and 1,900 civilians in the area. This is on top of the over 23,000 veterans. This key target for Russia will cost the lives of over 60,000 people and injure close to 200,000. The eastern portion of Colorado Springs would be decimated, although people in the mountains to the west of the small city could be spared from much of the fallout as the wind would blow radioactive particles further east toward Kansas. Then there is Offutt Air Force Base just outside Omaha, Nebraska. This is the headquarters of the United States' Strategic Command and would be a very important base for Russia to take out. The U.S. Strategic Command's mission is to deter strategic attack through a safe, secure, effective, and credible global combat capability and, when directed, is ready to prevail in conflict. So it's pretty obvious why Russia would want to destroy the headquarters of this organization. The nuclear warhead that struck off it would cause a serious breach in U.S. defenses. The blast would kill 40,000 people almost instantly and injure around 145,000 more. This is because over 32,000 military, civilian, contractors, dependents, and retirees call this area home, and Omaha is a city of around 500,000. Again, the waters of the Missouri River would quickly evaporate from the heat, and then the incoming water would be irradiated as it flowed toward the Mississippi. Strategic Command would be transferred to one of the other 10 combatant command sites in the U.S. to continue preparations for a retaliatory strike, although at this point the U.S. would have launched its own nuclear missiles already as it tried to wipe out as many Russian targets as possible. Another strategic location Russia could aim its nukes at would be rural Maine, almost near the border of Canada. It's here that the VLF transmitter Cutler is located. It's this station that transmits one-way communication to submarines in the U.S. Navy's Atlantic Fleet. These transmissions could reach vessels both on the surface and underwater. It transmits at 24 kilohertz with an input power of up to 1.8 megawatts. This means Cutler can only transmit text messages at a low data rate. The base will be an important target for Russia because it's this transmission base that will send launch codes and orders to U.S. submarines with nuclear capabilities in the Atlantic Ocean. By destroying this base, it'll be harder for U.S. command to contact these submarines. The casualties caused by the nuclear explosion at the VLF transmitter Cutler would be minimal due to its remote location. However, the ocean life and coastal ecosystems of the area will be completely destroyed. Cutler and the surrounding areas will suffer around 800 casualties from the nuclear blast, as the town itself only has a population of about 500. The counterpart to the VLF transmitter Cutler is the Jim Creek Naval Radio Station in Washington State. It's this facility that sends transmissions to the submarines in the Pacific Fleet. Obviously, this is another base the Kremlin would want to take out so the U.S. couldn't send orders to its submarines off the east coast of Russia. However, like Cutler, the Jim Creek Naval Radio Station is in a remote area, so casualties due to the blast will be relatively low. An estimated 400 people would die in the immediate explosion, and another 10,000 or so would be injured. The forests of the region would be set ablaze and, depending on the weather, could burn for weeks. People who survived the blast would flee to the coast and seek shelter on islands just off the west coast of the state. However, the U.S. has another way to send messages to its Pacific fleet. Hawaii sits about 2,000 miles or 3,200 kilometers from the mainland of the U.S. On the island of Oahu is the Lualua Lei VLF transmitter, which also has the ability to send orders to the Pacific fleet, so Russia would also likely target this location as well. Hawaii may be one of the most remote island chains in the world, but Russian missiles launched from subs would still be able to reach its shores. Unlike Cutler and Jim Creek, Lualua Lei is a relatively populated area. Oahu is the most populous island in the Hawaiian island chain, with close to a million people on it at any given time. A chunk of these individuals are tourists, but Oahu has a decent-sized population on its own. That means if that the Lualua Lehi VLF transmitter was hit with a nuclear bomb, it would decimate the population on the western part of the island. Anyone else on Oahu would likely get a huge dose of radiation as there would be nowhere to hide, and the ocean breeze would sweep radioactive particles and debris across the island. The immediate death toll would be around 18,500, with 76,000 more people injured. However, the fact that Oahu is also home to Pearl Harbor and a number of naval installations would mean this island would likely be hit with several nukes. All of the locations we've discussed thus far have been key military targets. The cumulative casualties as a result of nukes just hitting the locals would be in the hundreds of thousands. But if Russia were to launch a nuclear strike, they wouldn't just target military installations, they'd hit major cities as well. There would be too much at stake for them to leave major urban centers with large populations unharmed. 
For each American that wasn't killed in the initial nuclear strike, there would be another possible soldier that Russia would have to deal with down the road. This means there are definitely some key cities that would be targeted in the initial Russian nuclear strike. The scary part about these targets is that the casualty numbers would be much, much higher than anything we've seen thus far in the history of humanity. New York City is the financial capital of the United States, and perhaps the world. However, this will not stop Russia from targeting the island of Manhattan. A nuke detonating over New York would be disastrous. If Russia was trying to cripple the US, it would probably fire a nuke at the financial district in Lower Manhattan. To be fair, it doesn't really matter where a nuke hits in New York City, as the island of Manhattan is only around 13.4 miles long, yet with a population of 1.63 million. Very few people would be able to escape the blast of an 800 kiloton nuke. When the war had detonated, it would immediately kill around 1.5 million people. Another 3 million would be seriously injured from radiation burns or collapsed buildings. There are close to 8.5 million people in all five boroughs of New York City, and between the shockwave, the blinding flash of light, and the flying debris, everyone in the city would be affected. The medical infrastructure wouldn't be able to handle all the casualties, since a lot of major hospitals would have either been destroyed in the blast or severely damaged. Fires would rage through the city, while bridges, tunnels, and evacuation routes would become gridlocked or impassable. Another aspect of all nuclear explosions is that an electromagnetic pulse is released that would fry communication and electronic systems. High-tech medical equipment, computers, and cell phones would no longer work, and the city's power grid would go down. It would be like New York City was sent back to the 1700s, but this would not be the only city decimated by nuclear blasts if Russia decided to launch a nuclear attack. On the west coast, Los Angeles would also be a target. LA isn't as densely populated as New York City, but with a population of just under 4 million, the City of Angels would see a lot of death and destruction. When a nuke went off, it would annihilate pretty much all of downtown LA. It would kill over 500,000 people and injure 1.5 million more. According to the city, there are 5,484,606 automobiles, 123,669 motorcycles, and 1,068,213 commercial vehicles in LA. Those that were not incinerated by the fireball would be crashed by blinded drivers or hurtled across the landscape by the resulting air blast. The city already has water shortages, and the nuclear explosion would only make things worse. Miles of pipes would be rendered useless. What little water storage there was would be destroyed. People would flee the city but would find an inhospitable landscape all around them that was parched of liquid. The coastal winds would blow the radioactive smoke and soot inland, covering everything with a radiated fallout. In the middle of the country, Chicago and its 2.7 million residents would be a target as well. When the nuke detonated over the city, it would kill close to 600,000 people. Although, if downtown Chicago ended up being the epicenter of the blast, half the explosion and shockwave would extend into Lake Michigan, which could save the lives of many to the west of the city. However, even with part of the devastation being over water, over a million people would be injured in the blast. Between New York, Los Angeles, and Chicago, the three most populated cities in the country would be obliterated. Washington, D.C. would definitely be hit, and many military installations would become nothing but craters with mushroom clouds rising up above them. Russia would need to go all in if it had any hope of destroying the U.S. in a nuclear war. In fact, Russia has enough nuclear warheads to hit major cities, urban areas, and every military base in the U.S. many times over. A map of targets in the U.S. would look something like this. So it's clear that no matter where you are in the U.S., chances are there would be a Russian nuke coming your way if Putin launched his entire arsenal. But it gets worse. Even if you were far away from all major cities or military targets, the radiation would still likely reach you from the fallout. As debris, smoke, and dust are kicked up into the atmosphere by a nuclear explosion, irradiated particles are carried long distances by the wind and then fall to the ground contaminating water, food, and the air. So really, the danger zones extend much further than just the major cities and military bases if Russia decides to launch nukes at the US. As you can see, people who live pretty much anywhere in the eastern United States will receive an unhealthy dose of radiation, which is really bad news, since around 80% of Americans live east of the Mississippi. The reason for that has a lot to do with climate and weather patterns, but that's a discussion for another video. What is important to know is that around 265.6 million people will either be killed, injured, or exposed to radioactive fallout in the US if Russia attacks with nukes. But what about the rest of the world? We focused a lot on the US because Russia could not hope to win a nuclear war without targeting the US and the thousands of nukes in its arsenal. Regardless of what the initial targets of a Russian nuclear attack were, mutually assured destruction is inevitable at this point. 
So Putin might decide not just to target the US, but major military bases across Europe as well. One main target would be the Allied Air Command in Rammstein, Germany. The purpose of this military installation is to lead NATO air and missile defense activities, including 24-7 air policing and monitoring of Alliance airspace. Therefore, if Russia was planning on launching nukes, this would be one of the targets outside of the US on the list. One main aspect of Allied Air Command's job is to monitor the skies for incoming missiles. This means that they'd be one of the first to know that Russia launched nukes, but it's unlikely there'd be enough time to evacuate people before the warhead started falling. When the nuke detonates over the Allied Air Command base, it would kill around 30,000 people in the blast. But firing nukes at Europe is a dangerous proposition, because there's a chance at least some of the fallout would be carried into Russia. But if Putin launches his entire nuclear arsenal, the fallout would be the least of anyone's worries. Like with the US, it's probable that Russia would launch nukes at some of the most populated cities in Europe as well. One target would undoubtedly be London, as the United Kingdom has over 200 nukes of its own. This means that the 8.8 .8 million people living in the English capital would be at great risk. A nuclear warhead that detonated over London would vaporize the entirety of the Parliament, Buckingham Palace, and many other government buildings which are concentrated in the center of the city. In the initial blast, 1 million people would die. In the following moments, another 2.3 million casualties would be caused by the shockwave. The only structures that would survive the nuke would be on the outskirts of the city. Like with New York City and other major urban areas we discussed so far, London would be set on fire and any hospitals would be completely overwhelmed. That is, if anyone could reach them and there were still staff alive to tend to the injured. Military and emergency personnel who were not caught in the multiple attacks across the UK would be deployed to urban areas where survivors would need the most help. Unfortunately for England and the surrounding regions, most of the islands would be subjected to nuclear fallout, although the coastal winds coming off the Atlantic could carry a lot of the radioactive particles that have been kicked up into the sky and out to the North Sea. No matter which part of the world or which way you look at it, Russian nukes being fired at any target is terrifying, but let's examine a couple of extreme circumstances. As you've seen, there would be more casualties in some places than others. But where would the most casualties occur from in a single nuclear strike? For this terrifying scenario, we'll have to go to one of the most densely populated cities in the world. The Philippines is an ally and defense partner of the US. In fact, it's one of the most important alliances the US has in Asia. Therefore, it's not out of the realm of possibility that Russia would fire nukes at the Philippine capital of Manila. Manila is one of the most densely populated cities on the planet. In 2020, it had 111,532 people per square mile or 43,062 people per square kilometer. However, this is just within the city. It's the metro area where things start to get really packed. The city of Manila has a population of around 1.8 million people. However, the Manila metro area has a population of close to 13.5 million people. The Manila metro area is about 239 square miles or 620 square kilometers. What this means is that the population density of Metro Manila is 56,485 people per square mile or 21,774 people per square kilometer. Remember that the fireball of an 800 kiloton nuke is about one square mile. When you consider just how densely packed the city and surrounding area are, things start to get out of hand very quickly. If a Russian nuke detonated over Manila, it would instantly kill about 2.1 million people. The casualties beyond that would be close to 5 million. The more dense a city is, the more death and destruction a nuke would cause. But there's another factor at play. Not all of Russia's nukes are 800 kilotons. Russia actually detonated the Tsar Bomba, the largest nuke in the history of the world, on October 30, 1961. This nuclear bomb had a yield of 50 megatons, which makes it over five times more powerful than the traditional nuclear warheads we've been discussing in our examples so far. Supposedly, the USSR only built one operational Tsar Bomba and two prototypes, but this cannot be confirmed, as the Kremlin may have constructed more than are being stored somewhere in Russia. It's worth noting that Russia has several nuclear devices with yields between 1 and 50 megatons that it could fire at its enemies. But what if it were to drop a bomb similar in scale to the Tsar Bomba? What would that look like and what would happen? For this scenario, let's go back to New York City. Russia has modified a Tupolev Tu-160 supersonic heavy strategic bomber to drop a nuclear bomb the size of Tsar Bomba. The bomb falls toward the middle of Manhattan and detonates. Most of the island of Manhattan is vaporized by the fireball created by the massive explosion. The fireball extends 2.87 miles or 4.62 kilometers from the epicenter. The waters of the Hudson and East Rivers are immediately evaporated. The island of Manhattan and the surrounding area are nothing more than a smoldering crater turning the metropolis into hell on earth. 
Heavy blast damage caused by the air burst from the detonation knocks over and damages buildings as far as 5.5 miles or 8.9 kilometers away. The concrete jungle of New York City that once had high rises extending over 1,000 feet into the air is now leveled like a windswept desert. The mushroom cloud from the explosion reaches 40 miles or 64 kilometers high. It can be seen from hundreds of miles away. Houses and older buildings as far as 12.8 miles or 20.7 kilometers from the detonation are knocked down, and thermal radiation with the intensity to cause third-degree burns is felt as far away as 37 miles or 60 kilometers. Moments after the 50 megaton nuke goes off, the death toll reaches 7.6 million people. In the coming days, more will succumb to radiation and trauma to their bodies. Somewhere around 12 million people will suffer some type of injury from the nuclear blast. The ground around the initial blast site will remain irradiated for up to five years. A 50 megaton nuke that is detonated over a city would cause more death and destruction in a few seconds than conventional weapons could cause in hours. Nuclear war is a terrifying thought that hopefully the world will never need to contend with. If Russia did attack any of the targets mentioned in the video with nukes, you can be sure that the US and its allies would retaliate. All the catastrophic mayhem we discussed would also be happening to Russian cities as well. In an all-out nuclear exchange between Russia and NATO, it's estimated that when the nukes stopped falling, the death toll would reach close to 100 million. However, this is just a small fraction of how many people would die as a result of the nuclear winter caused by this series of events. Now watch how NATO would respond to a nuclear strike, or check out This Is How You Actually Survive a Nuclear Attack.